Up next in our summer improvement series, we have a man who needs no introduction with his stellar performance this year and quite the mentor to these young kids. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire you. Need Indeed. Well, we do indeed need to talk about Nazem Kadri and his uh, killer season that he had as well as blossoming into a true leader and just how far he's come, like, in the last six years, I would say, um, in his career and his reputation. And, of course, the will he stay, will he go um, conversation that we have to have as well because we we see it all the time, right? But uh, make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. Also, I don't think I ever said it um, on the show, but Nick will not be uh, joining me again as co-host. He is taking on uh, the Locked on Oilers show. So it will just be me for the time being and we'll have some special guests along the way. So any recommendations? Let me know. Um, but obviously, best of luck to Nick. Oh, boo, Oilers. But if you're interested in good analytics and analysis, go listen to Locked On Oilers. All right. Nazem Kadri's um, season was not something that anyone kind of expected, I would say. You know, uh, 75 points, 29 goals. Uh, in 82 games is impressive. Um, he really obviously took a, took a step in back up in his game. You know, after having that point per game season with Colorado, and then dropping to uh, I believe it was like 55 points around there, and then to jump back up to 75 is that's impressive, especially when you consider. The talent he had around them in Colorado versus what he has in Calgary. And he played most of the season with two very young players. And we're going to talk more about um, Pospisil and Zari and Kadri here in a little bit. But there is still plenty of gas left in his tank. And I am thoroughly impressed. I This is not the Kadri. I knew when he was playing for Toronto. This, this is not the same person. He has evolved his game. He has stepped up to be a very good leader. And one thing that really stuck out to me this season was how he always spoke to the media. It did not matter if it was before practice, after practice, after a game. Win, lose, shut out, uh, you know, allowed seven goals, whatever, whatever it was. Kadri was always there to answer for himself and for the team. I really like what we saw from him this year. I think, again, you know, not to sound like a an old fashioned hockey mind, but like those intangibles, you can't teach every hockey player to be a leader. You can't teach every person to be a leader. And I think that um, a lot of this comes from being in the environment in Toronto and kind of being in a situation where it's like, okay, like I don't want to replicate that. I don't want to be like, this is the opposite of what I want to do 
in, in my career. And then of course, going to Colorado and just being such a, a, a pinnacle and like a, an integral part of that team. And he's, he's still playing that role in Calgary. It is just to a different level because I think we all know that the Calgary Flames are not a Stanley Cup contending team uh, at, at this point in time. <laughs> and he has to be a leader for these young guys coming. Oh, actually, he doesn't have to. You don't have to do anything. But he has chosen to take that step to be that guy that, you know, he's he's not hiding in the shadows. He's not hiding after a bad game. And, you know, we're going to talk more about it coming up here um, in the next segment. But he's not like, oh, I'm a Stanley Cup champion and where I'm playing on a rebuilding team now. I'm not helping you. Um, he shows up every day. He puts the puck in the net. Everyone really wanted him to get 30 goals, and that would have been sick. Um, just because no one saw this coming for him. Um, not because he's a bad hockey player, but because I think everyone was kind of in this consensus of like 65 to 70 points would be good. Like that may exceed expectations because you are not getting that 82 or 81 point season again. So for him to come within, you know, reaching distance, that's, pr that's pretty impressive. Um, and again, you look at the talent that was with Colorado and, and what he played with here, two rookies to me where he spent most of the season. I, I, I should say that, but I, I really like what we saw from him. I think that he he's one of the players that could easily just like phone it in and be like, what am I putting in all this work for? Uh, you know, I've already won. Uh, like he could just remove all emotion from it, but it shows to the, like shows the kind of player and guy he is. And I think that that's neat. And we're going to talk more about the uh, guy that he is coming up here next as we go over uh, this growth in reputation and um, taking on this leadership role with Martin Pospisil and Connor Zari. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back after this. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. And... Indeed doesn't help doesn't just help hire faster. 93% of employees employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to recent to a recent Indeed survey. Uh, I like using Indeed because it allow it's user friendly and I know on the back end of things it is so helpful as uh, not as a business owner but as someone who helps with that sort of stuff. So um, listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast, indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get in your podcasts, as well as YouTube. Uh, we're here for you Monday through Friday, all through July, where there's no off-season here. Uh, so happy to be here with you. With Kadri came a reputation, right? Like, you, we all saw his time in Toronto, 
and how it was just kind of like a running joke that he would get suspended in the first round of the playoffs. And, you know, it was only the first round because the Leafs never advanced. Or he would just be on everyone's nerves and stirring the pot. And I feel like he has grown a lot. Because, yeah, of course, he's still going to be involved in some scrums. He's going to throw a big hit. He's going to run his mouth. That That's part of the game. But he has removed that reckless behavior that instantly my mind goes to the 2019 playoff series against Boston when he cross-checked Jake DeBrusque in the face um, and then ended up getting suspended uh, for the remainder of the playoffs. Uh, which was just the first round. Um, but, like, that's not the same person that we're watching now in Calgary. And I think that that's, that's good. Um, I think that he played, uh, he played pretty good hockey in Toronto, obviously, and, and in Colorado. But I feel like there is still so much gas left in this tank. And he has evolved into a more play driven player if that's like he's not into the extracurriculars like I think of Matthew Kachuk and how he's always chewing chomping on his mouth guard and grabbing someone or Martin Pospisil um you know uh, elbowing Brad Marchand things like that like he is very much just focused on the game and I think that that's a great great thing and it's a great uh, example to set for players just like Martin Pospisil and Connor Zary. This line was essentially the top line at some points in the season. Uh, at least they were rolled out like that. Both uh, Connor Zary and Martin Pospisil made their unexpected jumps to the NHL uh, for the full season. It was expected that Zary would make the leap. Pospisil was not on anyone's radar so it's great to see that that worked out um both players have talked about how having Kadri as a center really shaped this year for them in terms of learning and allow being allowed to make mistakes and not being approached by like a disgruntled veteran and being like you guys should know better or why are you making me look like that out there? It, it was a learning environment. And I think that that is so important because this is the foundation you're laying for this next generation of Flames hockey. And he was certainly a helper, not a hater. And I think that's great because, again, you need – a positive environment if you are going to get through an 82 game season the way the flames were playing hockey last year wasn't always bad but when it was bad like losing 13 out of 15 to end the season that's you know you need someone that's willing to to help um I think that Kadri is a well-rounded player. I I really appreciate the role that he has taken on with the two younger guys. And I'm sure, you know, they're assuming Zari does take over at center and Pospisil is going to be getting some time at center too. You know, there's going to be like a new batch uh, of kids at throughout the season. And I'm sure that they are going to be playing – with Kadri at some point. And I I don't hate that because again, you are learning and playing with a highly skilled player that you can lean on and you know that he I don't know what the right word is. He isn't um he isn't gonna discourage you if you make a mistake. And I think that that's really important because We've seen even seasoned veterans play so uptight to, and they're too afraid to make a mistake. Like 
that they're bound to make a mistake and snowball mistake after mistake after mistake. But you need some sort of breathing room. I think Kadri provides that. Um, I do hope that Martin Pospisil and him have kind of had conversations the same way that I hope him and Mark Savard had conversations because Pospisil does play on the edge and he has already crossed the line. He earned himself a suspension and you don't want to, number one, you don't want to be doing that to other people, but number two, you don't want to have a reputation. You don't need to be the next Tom Wilson. You don't need to be the next Brad Martian. You don't need to be a pest like that. You don't need to be suspended. Just go out there and do what you have been doing to, to get to the NHL. Uh, and I, I understand it's a lot easier said than done, but like, I hope that Kadri is just like, hey, I I played good hockey and was doing dumb stuff because I was just a, a pest. I was too emotional, whatever the case may be. But then I really took my game to the next level once I started f- distancing my focus on that and putting more emphasis on my skating, on my special teams practices, or whatever the case may be. I just, I I don't want to see anyone else get hurt. And Pospisil is just kind of like that guy that it's, uh, his reputation is there. So we'll have to see where that goes. But, you know, Kadri did a really good job taking those two under his wings. And I, w- I do want to see him play with Matt Coronado this season. Um, I do think that we are going to be seeing Matt Coronado to at least start the season. So maybe getting his feet under him with a veteran center uh, that has proven to help boost these kids and get them, you know, push them out of the nest, if you will. Uh, we'll do ever do Coronado some good and build that confidence and have him ready to, you know, take a, on a larger role in the organization. But coming up next, we're going to talk about this will he stay, will he go sort of discussions because it feels like we don't know, but it's not always a bad thing. And we'll be back right after this. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me on today's episode of Lockdown Flames. Uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter at Just Belmosto. For many reasons, you want or you want Kadri to stay for many reasons, right? Uh, obviously, you could still score is still an effective player and a very good veteran and a good mentor, good leadership thing. The flames need a lot of, and there, there was mention, I think it was last, last summer um, or start of the season when there was a report circulating that, if the Flames took the direction of a rebuild, Kadri will waive his no movement or no trade clause um, because he doesn't want to be part of a rebuilding organization, which, like, I, I get that. Um, I, I guess, you know, when you have that kind of caliber talent and you're just a naturally competitive person, uh, and a veteran, especially, you know, you can kind of call the shots there. You've, you've earned that. And I, I don't, we, we know the flames are 
taking more of that rebuilding approach rather than just tinkering and retooling. I do not hate this. I think that it's obviously beneficial for the long term. But what does this mean for Kadri? Because we ha- we saw rumors at the draft or like around the draft rather of teams kind of potentially inquiring about Kadri and Kadri wanting to be traded, but none of it was really ever substantiated enough for me to be like, aha, okay, something's brewing here. I don't know if that's changed. I don't know if he doesn't want to be part of a rebuilding organization. I do think he does really like the city of Calgary and everything, you know, the organization has brought into his life. But if you think that you can go win another cup with Vancouver or whoever, uh, you wave that that move no movement clause and you say, send me here. Or, you know, they come to you and say, hey, um, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of it. Minnesota uh, wants to trade for you. What, do you. what are your thoughts on that? You can waive it. You can say, uh, try again later. Like, there, there is that option. But I... I haven't heard anything else that suggests he's changed his mind. But at the same time, the flames have only gotten worse since that first report came out. So does he want a trade? I don't know. I I don't know why he would, why he would change his mind, especially if he doesn't want to be part of a rebuilding situation. And It would really stink. This would be a very big loss for the Flames. Not only would it be a tough loss because it's another one of Brad Tree Living's contracts, contract extensions that just kind of bit him in the butt or bit everyone else in the butt while he goes and destroys Toronto. Um, I guess it, it wouldn't, The Flames aren't really in a position, uh, maybe after next draft, to explore trading him. I think, you know, they really need to build up some center depth before they just kick their, like, best center to the curb, basically. Uh, it's, It's a tricky situation for the Flames to navigate, but not tricky like Jacob Markstrom. That was a whole different type of sticky situation. And I think that it's just um, an interesting one that they may find themselves in in a year or two. And so be it. Like, at this point, they're rebuilding. They have enough of their own bad contracts. (laughs) They might take on some more to help out a team and, you know, uh, stash away those draft picks, but like they can also still do right by their players. Uh, you know, it doesn't all go out the window when you decide to rebuild, like you can still help some guys out. Um, I guess for my expectations for this season would be to continue to be that mentor. I don't expect him to put up 75 points again. Uh, realistically I'm thinking 65 tops. Um, I'm not going to say I don't want him to score more. But at the end of the day, the less points, the better. So then the Flames lose more. They get a better draft pick. But, like, at the same time, I really want to watch enjoyable hockey. I want to watch competitive hockey. I don't want to watch men out there skating on the ice like they don't know what they're doing, blindfolded, with with sticks. Because sometimes that's what it feels like. (laughs) And think about how insufferable it is to watch like Chicago or San Jose both have taken steps this off season, but like, could you imagine watching like five years of that? 
No. So I think there's fluid fluidity in this situation. I think a trade could happen, but I, I don't think anything's imminent. Um, I also feel like there's a great respect between Kadri and the organization, like a mutual respect. So, you know, it, it, Craig Conroy has said it and Don Maloney said it from day one. We don't want hostages. So if you want to go out there and play for a different team, all you have to do is knock, knock. My agent and I have discussed and putting in a trade request or I, I'm assuming that they like don't submit it like PTO, like us normal people uh, as average Joes. Um, so I'm sure it's a phone call from an agent. It's, you know, the player. It's, could you imagine texting someone that, that you, that, that feels pretty low and unprofessional, but that's just a, a whole different can of worms when, with professionalism. <laughs> but I, I do want good things for Kadri, regardless of, if he plays out his whole contract in Calgary or if he plays it elsewhere and the flames are eating some money, it's just, um, a situation that they, they got themselves into. And now the person to hold the, the person to hold accountable is probably going to play or trade rather Mitch Marner, who is like, this generational talent, but then disappears in the playoffs. And like, I just feel like Leafs, Leafs fans are going to be coming for his, his job. Uh, go listen to lockdown Leafs for more in-depth analysis on the Toronto Maple Leafs and Brad tree living's moves. But Craig Conroy has watched and he's learned and he knows what to avoid and what to, uh, what direction to go in. I have a lot more faith in him after his first full year as a general manager, as well as after this draft and free agency. So we will have to continue to wait and see, but that will do it for me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day, through the month of July, and we'll still be here in August. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to continue this series uh, probably with Sharon Govich tomorrow, uh, depending on a few things. So thank you. Tune in. Let me know what you think of Kadri season. Let me know if you want to see anyone on the podcast, I'm working on something right now to get someone pretty cool. Um, it's a work in progress, of course, lots of moving parts there, but thank you. I hope you all have a fantastic day and evening whenever you're listening. Just thank you for making Locked on Flames part of your day, and I will see you all tomorrow.